praise you Jesus hallelujah let's worship the Lord this morning the book of 1st John 4 4 says the greater one lives in us than he that is in the world and because we are born of God we have overcome the world that's what 1st John 5 4 says that he that is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith when we are born of God that means we have come into his family that's a new birth that we have and as a result of being in his family we have an ability to overcome anything that is in the world whether it be sickness whether it is disease poverty lack or want we have a right to overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ the blood that he shed for us is our victory and your faith is what gives you that victory to overcome the world and if you're facing a circumstance in life or a challenge today I encourage you to take scriptures on victory on faith and overcoming and see yourself in those scriptures put your name there and say Lord this is my covenant that I have with you I have a right to overcome everything that is in the world you know as a Christian God has given us this authority not to be trampled on in life but to use our authority against all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us so let's encourage ourselves as we sing these songs on the blood and on the greater one who lives in us amen praise God and everybody joining us online we're so glad that you're here we pray that you will be blessed and strengthened and the Word of God will minister and speak life to you today you can overcome the world because you have the victory in Christ Jesus. There is nothing that is too hard for our God. And as we sing these songs of praises on rejoicing in who he is to us, what he has done for us, see yourself as already being an overcomer. Whatever you're facing today, let's not choose as Christians to look at that issue. But we're going to speak to that mountain, speak to the mountain of sickness speak to the mountain of disease and Jesus said it shall obey you without doubting when you believe those mountains have to move in your life we pray you'll be blessed and encouraged and strengthened today hallelujah father we thank you for the victory that you've given us and we pray father right now that your presence that is already here is full of joy and that joy is our strength and Lord I thank you right now for speaking to your people giving them wisdom, understanding, and showing them, Father, how they need to do things that come up in life or whatever decisions that they need to make. I pray, Lord, that you give them the wisdom, Father. Thank you, Jesus, because you are with us, you are in us, so it is through you that we live and we move and we have our being. And Satan, you have no authority over, over us because by the blood of Jesus, you are defeated and the greater one lives in us and he is doing great and mighty things right now and here today in jesus name amen let's sing about the greater one living in us let's rejoice
Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The people were amazed the way he spoke. Scripture says that with mighty signs and wonders, they were amazed when they saw the, you know, the apostles with mighty signs and wonders that they gave witness of Jesus and his resurrection. And also Jesus, you know, the people were amazed when he spoke words. They said, oh man, the words that he's speaking, how has he learned this? It was the Holy Ghost working in him. Amen. And that same spirit is in us. Hallelujah. Say the mighty Holy Spirit, the mighty Holy Spirit is living in me. Living in me. The, same Holy Ghost the same Holy Ghost that raised Christ from the dead, that raised Christ from the dead lives, in me, lives in me. Has brought me out of death, has brought me out of death into, life. into life. Amen. Let's sing. His blood has given us life. I'm alive because of your blood. I'm forgiven because of your blood. I am righteous because of your blood. Jesus, your blood has given me
just because of your blood Jesus, your blood has given of death of, of dying as a Christian you don't have to even think about fear of death he delivered you from that fear and brought you to the place of life you can be assured of where you where you are heading where you are going because he has delivered you from fear thank you Lord once and for all he paid the price for our sins the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10 it says, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And that scripture is telling us, explaining how Jesus once he had to go and lay down his life and offer it for the sins of mankind. But in the old covenant, the priests, they would have to go yearly and they would have to offer continuously blood sacrifices so the people could receive forgiveness of their sins but Jesus did it once for all he entered into that holy place and so when we see that we can be assured that our salvation is secure you're not going to lose your salvation forever you are sealed with that promise and I love that the Bible says about how he has written our names in the Lamb's book of life the day you receive Jesus, he wrote your name in that book. And he's never going to erase it. Because once for all, he paid the price. Let's sing about that. Once and for all, what he has done for us. Once and for all 
life's blood, He spilled it on Calvary so that we can have a healed body, a healed mind, a prosperous soul. Thank you, Lord, for shedding your blood, Lord Jesus. You bore it all for us, nothing that you left untouched. Thank you, Lord, for setting people free right now of sickness and disease. Lord, healing them in their minds from torment right now. Be free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the power of the Lord that is present here, healing people, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus, be free right now in Jesus' name. Be healed from every mind stuff. Be free from it. You are loosed from every weakness in your body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We speak to the bones. We speak to joints right now. We command you to come in order. Come, come in line right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be loosed from every ache, every pain in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus has given life to your body right now. Life to those dead areas in the name of Jesus. We speak life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for fixing it, Lord. Through your operation, you're able to do a perfect work. Hallelujah. Faith in Jesus' name and the blood that he shed does a perfect work work. Hallelujah. In weakness you can be made strong. As, as Paul said that, he said my grace, God said, Jesus said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And Lord, we thank you. Even in weakness, we can look to your promise and say your strength is perfect. And let's say that together. Lord, I thank you for your strength. Thank you for your strength. That is made perfect in weakness when I am weak I say that I am strong in the Lord in the power of his might hallelujah praise you Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord strong in you Lord thank you Lord just before we partake in the covenant meal let's see the doctrine of covenants it's called the communion. It is also called the fellowship, one with another, and uh, our fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to understand this covenant was made through Jesus Christ, who was sinless, a perfect man, who died on the cross. And we see an Old Testament even before the Old Testament introduced, we find that before the laws of Moses was introduced, we find how communion started with Abraham. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 14. In Genesis chapter 14, we find very clearly, and in verse 17, how uh, his nephew Lot, Abraham's nephew Lot, we'll read from verse 16. Now we find that Sodom and Gomorrah, the kingdom that was Sodom and Gomorrah, king of Gomorrah, and their people and their things were all taken away. And we find that Abraham and his servants rescued. Abraham and his servant rescued his nephew. Just because of his nephew, he was able to go and help them and bring back his nephew and along with the goods that were stolen and brought back the people. And verse 16, and he brought back all the goods and also again his brother Lot and all the goods and the, uh, and the women also and the people Abraham with his trained uh, servants he was not an army but he, he had trained servants he had the grace of God upon his life and he brought back he fought a king he fought two kings and he brought back everything along with his brother or his nephew, Lot. 
and uh, handed over to the king of Sodom. In verse 17, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter. And thereafter we find in verse 18 that Melchizedek, the king of Salem, the word king of Salem means uh, the king of peace brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the most high God and the theologians and all have settled together most of them have settled together by saying Melchizedek was Jesus himself or he was the one who was to come he had no father he had no mother but he was God himself in the human form he came and he brought bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. This was a time we find that Abraham had won this battle. And verse 19 he says, He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, who has delivered your enemies into thy hands and he gave him tithes of all. Abraham gave tithes of all to Melchizedek. And Melchizedek was the type and shadow of Jesus. We could read that also in the book of, you can go home and read the book of Hebrews chapter 7. We're not going to go into all those details. But we're going to see verse 18, how Jesus himself or the one who made the covenant with Abraham, verse 18, we'll go back to 18 and he says, he brought bread and wine and he was a priest of the most high God and he pronounced a blessing over him and he blessed Abraham, verse 19, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. When we partake of the covenant meal, let's understand a blessing is pronounced over our lives for being in covenant with almighty God through the blood of Jesus Christ. We understand clearly in the New Testament after the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. But this was prophesied of how Jesus was to come and redeem mankind altogether. And uh, this was more or less a shadow of what was to happen, the bread and the wine. And Jesus himself being present, God himself being the high priest, he is bringing the blessing of the bread and the wine. And Jesus said, this is my body, eat and this is my blood. Drink of it. It's a blessing for us to partake in the covenant meal. Understanding that God has ordained. The God of heaven and earth has ordained. The blessing of the covenant meal. For each and every one of us. Abraham may have not understood. All what has. But now he knows. What was the meaning of Melchizedek, the prince, the king of peace, to come over and bring the bread and the wine and bless Abraham? And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, the most high God. See, the covenant is a blessing. For us to stay in this covenant is a blessing because once you come to Christ, this is no longer a ritual, but this is a covenant. Whenever we, or as often as we partake of it, we do show the death of the Lord's body. Let's go back to the, to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We read this before, but we'll read again. In verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body. This is my body. So when Melchizedek came, he, 
he brought the bread and he said eat and take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me this is my body it's his body we couldn't do anything for the covenant but just to offer our dirty lives our sinful lives but he made us new creations and he has brought us into this new relationship after the same manner also verse 25 he took the cup when he had supped saying this is the cup of the new testament in my body this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me what do we remember of jesus christ his death his burial and his resurrection it was through his death that there was blood that was spilt it was through his death that he offered his body on the cross it was through his death that the relationship that he had with god was broken for a season for a short season may said my god my god why have you forsaken me for the sole reason that god becomes our father that we don't have to pray that prayer anymore we will never have to pray oh my god oh my god why have you left me now we can call him oh my father my father you're always with me you never leave me nor forsake me we don't have to pray that prayer that jesus prayed because he felt that loneliness even more than all the pain that he was going through i think the greatest pain was when he had that spiritual death that took place his spiritual death was that god was separated from him on the cross god separated from him on the cross he was alone that was the first death that jesus had that's a spiritual death that jesus had which has caused a spiritual birth to take place in our lives and the second death was when he died physically that has caused us to enjoy the freedom of health and good living that's the blessing that we have through the blood of jesus christ and the broken body of the lord jesus christ do this in remembrance of me this is where the enemy got stuck he couldn't do anything about it if he knew the bible says if the devil knew it's in first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 8 and we'll come back to verse 11 again which none of the princes of this world knew or demon powers they didn't know what was happening this man for three and a half long years was casting out demons healing the sick raising the dead the most powerful character that the devil has ever seen is now being crucified which none of the princes of this world knew if they had known it they would have not crucified the lord of glory the devil would have never plan this thing up through the high priest at this time who offered 30 pieces of silver to one of the disciples of Jesus and said betray me Jesus for 30 pieces of silver he would have never done that the bible says when they were partaking in the covenant meal that the devil entered into Judas and he gave him the plan accept the offer of 30 pieces of silver and betray this man he is of no use for you you have 30 pieces of silver that was more great for him the bible says how the devil entered into judas let me just read that scripture you should be able to find it here yeah? i think i found it in the book of luke chapter 22 and verse number 1 onwards now the feast of the unleavened bread drew nigh which was called the passover 
that was the covenant, uh, the Passover meal, which we call the covenant meal that the Jews were partaking of. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him. For they feared the people. They had to do it so cunningly and craftily. So that if they did it openly, the people would have stood against the high priest. But they did it in such a way that they caught Jesus in the place where only one of the disciples knew where he usually is praying. Then entered Satan into Judas, surname Scariot, being one of the twelve. And he went his way, communed with the chief priests and the captains that he might betray him unto them. And they were all glad, verse 5, and they were glad and covenanted to give him the money. That's how Jesus was betrayed. That's how Satan planned it in such a way. Got Judas, who was the treasurer of Jesus, and got him betrayed. Handed him over to the priest. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 8 says, Had the princes of this world knew, they, they had known that the death of Jesus was the end of all the satanic influence over people. That there's going to be a new race that's going to be born apart from the race of the Adamic race. All of us are born with the Adamic race where demons had control over our lives. But through the death of Jesus, there was a possibility of us who are born into this world with the Adamic nature to be turned into people with a new nature, the nature of Christ. And if the devil knew, he would have never done it. Here the devil had to meet only one Jesus he was the biggest problem for the last three and a half years. But now, after the resurrection, we find 120 people who were baptized with the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, 2 and 3 says how 120 people, they had the Holy Spirit that came upon their lives. They believed in God. When they, were, when they were in one place, in one accord, the Holy Spirit came down upon them and now the devil had to deal with 120 more Jesuses. Those who had the nature of Jesus. Those who had the quality of Jesus. Those who had the power to cast out demons. Those who had the power to lay hands on the sick. And those who had the power to raise the dead. And those who had the power, the greatest power they had was to change a man from, a, from the Adamic nature to the nature of Christ. 120 people were qualified. Through the death of one person, 50 days later, we find 120 fruits out of that one. And the 120, one of them stood up Peter and preached the gospel in the second chapter of Acts we find 300, 3,000 people were saved. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 when people heard the gospel for the very first time they said to Peter and Peter they asked, the verse before that this, when they were pricked in their hearts it says and when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do to get this new life that you're talking about? The 120 stood there, out of which Peter, he was the first speaker or the preacher of the gospel. 
And the people heard and they were pricking their hearts and they said, wow. 50 days ago we saw Jesus die on the cross. We thought we did the right thing by crucifying him and we thought that he was a blasphemous character. We all agreed and said, crucify him, crucify him, away with this man. We want Barabbas, we want Barabbas. But we didn't know that we were crucifying the son of glory. We didn't know that. They were pricked in their hearts. And men and brethren, what shall we do? And the next verse says, Peter answered and said unto them, Repent. Repent. That's how you get into a covenant with God. Repent of any form of worship or any form of ritual or any form of belief or any form of good deeds that you do with your life and say, I'm, go I'm a good person after all. Repent of all that. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What you see that will happen to us will happen to you if you will repent and believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Be baptized, believe, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You shall receive the same gift that we have received. And the next verse, verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children. This is a new race. The promise is not only for you, but for your children. To all that are far off, even away from Jerusalem, from the Palestinians, from, from, all, from, from the Middle Eastern countries, to far off as much as we are, even as many as the Lord, our God, shall call. Every one of us are saved and born into this new race. And we have come into a covenant relationship with Almighty God. Thank God for the grace of God. Going back, we're going to close with that. And then we'll partake in the covenant meal. That which was prophesied by Melchizedek, the king of peace. We see it happen in the life of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 25, we read that, verse 26, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show, you do show forth the Lord's death till he comes. What do you show? The very new nature that you have received through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's partake in the covenant meal, a covenant meal with meaning. I say, yes, I know. This is precious. This is the greatest of all things that have happened to me that God made a covenant through Jesus Christ with me. Without Jesus, I was unholy. God was holy. We couldn't get along. It's impossible. But Jesus, the mediator, he made the covenant. He stood between man and God. And made a covenant with us. So let's partake in this covenant meal.
Praise God. Let's pray this prayer and be thankful to the Lord for this covenant meal as we begin to understand more and more as the days go by of what a great covenant he made with us, an everlasting covenant which had nothing to do with us. We just had to offer our old tattered garments and he gave us a new garment of salvation. We had nothing to offer him. We just offered him our filthy robe. And he gave us the robe of righteousness. Let's thank God for his grace. Let's say, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy that flows in our lives. I pray, Lord, that your grace be upon our lives that we may carry this gospel to the people around who needs to receive Jesus, Lord of their lives. I pray, Lord, and I thank you for granting me the desire of my heart to be a witness, a soul winner for Jesus Christ. What you have done for me, you can do for others. I thank you, Lord, for this very blood covenant that you made with me, with your own blood, your, bo your broken body that has caused me to come into this new race, a holy people, a peculiar people, a holy nation. I thank you, Lord, for the new race, for the very nature of Christ, that you've given me, that I might carry this gospel wherever I go, that I may show forth your covenant in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's partake together. Thank you, Lord. Praise your glorious name. Praise your wonder-working name. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise your glorious name. Hallelujah. Healing is available in this covenant. There's healing in this table of blessing. This is the table of the Lord. Not a denominations table. Denominations try to keep away, shoo away from people from this table. But this is not a table of the denomination, it's the table of the Lord. Which is a cup of blessing to people. And all are welcome. Who receive Jesus Lord of their lives, they're welcome to partake. And partake of all the good that he has for us in this table. Peace, joy, comfort, strength, power, life. Free from anxiety. Healing. Whatever you believe for. That's what you get through this covenant. The table of the Lord. 
the cup of blessing thank god for the grace of god thank god for the cup of blessing jesus you are good thank you lord just be healed of any ailment in your body isaiah prophesied in isaiah 53 and verse 4 that he bore all our sicknesses and diseases and he carried all our pain believe god sorrows and griefs the words that are used there are also sicknesses diseases and pains he took it all on him to make sure that you are free from all that anxiety and worry and fear and pain and wounds hurts hurts of the past jesus has come to bind the broken heart and set the captives free thank you lord 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 praise just receive your healing right now receive your forgiveness right now you can be forgiven of all that you have done be forgiven right now thank you lord praise god praise god let's worship him and honor him with our tithes and our offerings it's a honorable thing for children of god to do where we come before him and honor him with our tithes and our offerings given it shall be given unto you bible says you can't stop what is coming from him but as we give we honor him and we see his goodness coming back upon our lives Praise God. Father, we thank and praise you for your grace, your love, your favor, your goodness upon our lives. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for honoring your people even as they have honored you. Father, with a tithe and offering of Father. I pray, Lord, for your grace. You said that tithe is holy before you, Lord. And even as they have honored you, you will keep the windows of heaven open for them that they will always have enough and more to enjoy all what you have promised them. Through your word, your promises are assured, O oh Father. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace, your love, your favor upon your people, O oh God. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, you have paid it all on the cross. And Lord, you have released your blessing upon their lives. As they have honored you, you will honor them wherever they go. That they are well protected and guarded. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.